a dry mixture, mix in with the wet. And most people are impatient at this stage and love to turn the mixer off and scrape down the sides. But you want to avoid doing this and let the mixer do all the work for you. That's why you bought a mixer. So we're just letting it incorporate and what takes time in this whole process should go about eight to 10 minutes until this dough looks very smooth. We'll come back to it so you can see what it's at at the next stage. So as your dough gets picked up by the mixer, you can see that it starts to pull away from the sides and actually clean the bowl. This is a really fantastic thing, so it's less cleaning later. But that's what you really want to look for, is it to live clean the sides of the bowl. And I only have this on speed two. If you have it on a higher speed, you can easily burn out your motor very quickly, so you want to be aware of that. So the dough right now looks a little shaggy still, it's only been going for about a minute or two. And if you feel like you hear the mixer doing that like rear, 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 you want to add a little bit more water. But when you're dealing with a very small batch, a little can go too far. So what we're gonna do is add about a tablespoon of water to this max and then see what happens if it softens up a little and you'll hear it in the motor where it gives way. But we don't want the dough to be wet. So that's what we're looking for. You'll hear it pick it up the water right away and kind of slop around the bowl. But be patient, again, it will start to get absorbed into the dough. And that's what you're looking for, it to just soften it up. You don't ever want the dough hook to be tearing your dough. So right now, it's just trying to pick up that excess water. It just takes a little bit of time. So you're looking for the dough to be quite smooth now. It's been about eight minutes or so. Um, I did add that little bit extra water. Everyone's hydration is gonna be slightly different because of the type of flour you use or the weather. So you have to remember to always kind of react, touch and feel your dough. It should be slightly soft um, without being sticky or really firm. So we're gonna take this out and just give it a light knead on the board. Okay, so my favorite tool to remove dough from a bowl instead of our hands is this plastic bowl scraper. And you want to make sure it's really bendable when you buy one and it's not really hard plastic. So you hold it with your thumb here and your fingers and you just scoop inside the bowl and you just take it out. Now this particular dough, you do not want to flour it on the board because it's just going to move around. We want to just use a nice clean cutting board, whether it's plastic or um, uh, wood. And then when you knead the dough, you want with your palm of your hand to push it here, lift it over, push with the palm of your hand and turn it a uh, quarter turn. Pull it over, palm of your hand, turn a quarter turn. This is a very fast process. Don't try and smush it too much. It'll stick to your hands. But we just want to create that nice, beautiful, smooth look. And sometimes it doesn't always look like that coming out of the mixer. So I guarantee you, if you just do this a couple times, you get that beautiful, smooth look. And that's what you're looking for. All right, now we have our kneaded dough that we're going to let rest for about 10 minutes. I'm just going to cover this on a non-floured work surface with a dry non-floured towel just to prevent it from getting a skin. We'll come back in 10 minutes. So we're gonna remove the towel and our dough has been resting for 10 minutes. The next step is using this tool which is a pastry scraper. It's a really handy tool just to have in your kitchen anyway and it's not very expensive. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna take our dough and kind of stretch it out and we're gonna be creating some strips. So I'm going to create three strips out of this dough and stretch that because this is how you get your individual pieces a little bit more even. And I want to create about a four ounce portion. So I'm using my digital scale to give and zeroing it out to make sure that I'm about the right size. So it's a little bit over, but we're going to be okay with that. Um, and the, then we'll place it here. So I'm going to keep cutting and just checking that one's five. So if you get one that's a little bit over, take a piece off, just cut it off with this and then set that aside. And I'll show you on the next one, I'll make a little smaller how to incorporate that. So we're a little shy and I probably need about that much to get four. So I want to take this guy here and put it up underneath. So he's hiding and then I will show you how to create that into a round later. Now that we have all of our portioned out um, bagel balls, 
then we're gonna go ahead and round them. And the reason why we wanna portion each one is so that they're all the same size and why that's really important is that it will bake evenly. You don't want a really small one and a really big one. So this is, I'm gonna show you the beginner method and then the advanced method. The beginner method is where we take one of these and we take our, I'm right-handed, so those of you who are left-hand are gonna do the opposite. You're gonna take your right hand and you're gonna create a C shape and then you're gonna basically rub this portion of your hand onto the cutting board going in a counterclockwise position. So I'm gonna dig deep into the cutting board, pushing down, but maintaining that C shape in my hand. And if you look really closely, I'll go in slow motion, the ball will actually roll itself in a clockwise position inside of my hand. I am not smashing down on the top, and we get this beautiful ball with the seam underneath. So if I smash down on top, it does nothing, you just move it around. That's not doing an effective job. So again, you create that C shape, and what that does is it stretches the dough up underneath, and you push into the cutting board, that's where most people have issues, is that they're just moving it around. Push it into the board, and then you're scraping this part of your hand on the wood, and then it just naturally rolls it and tucks it up underneath again like this. Okay, so those, if you had one of those cut pieces, just make sure you pull it up under and then you do this. This is exactly why we do not use any flour. If you used flour, these ball doughs would be all over the place and not tucking itself under. Um, if you get good at that and you wanna do efficiently with two hands, you do backwards C with your left, push down, and you're gonna go opposite directions and you can do two at one time. All right, now we have all of our completed dough balls and we're gonna let these rest again to really relax that gluten structure because the next step is going to be um, forming them into little logs. And so we wanna make sure that they have plenty of room to stretch. So you're gonna keep most of the dough covered while you're working. And then you're gonna take one at a time and you're gonna flip it over this way and kind of take your hand and roll using the entire palm and fingers. Your fingers are nice and tight, not open like this. And then I'm gonna take two hands and go back and forth and elongate the dough. It's as simple as that. Try not to push straight down into the dough. Make it roll with your hands with one hand first and then using two hands to elongate. What you do not want to do is taper the ends like this. So you want to just elongate evenly. And you see how it stretches back on me? That's why we're letting it rest again. So we're going to, again, one hand first, then two hands, stretching it evenly to there and then placing it to the side. You want to do all of the dough this stage and then we'll come back to the second stage. So we're gonna prep our pan by sprinkling some semolina flour. You can use parchment or silicone mat. I just have silicone, so I'm gonna go ahead and use that. Then we're gonna come over to our dough that's been resting for a few minutes. And I'm gonna just kind of stretch it just a hair more. So we're more at that like 10 inches right there. Then I'm going to take this and wrap it around my hand, the back of my hand. I'm actually using, well, I should use my right hand because it's easier to show you. You can do it with your right hand. You're going to wrap the dough starting in the back and then overlapping in the front about an inch and a half or so right here. Then with that in the middle of the palm of your hand, you're going to roll it back and forth to actually make it now the same width as the rest of the dough. So when you do this, it is all a continuous circle and it's glued together. It doesn't really matter which side. You're going to place it onto your pan so it looks like a donut. One more time. We're going to take our dough elongate it slightly, wrap it the back of our hands, overlap to the front about an inch and a half, place that part right in the middle of your palm, place the palm down, roll it back and forth until it feels about the same thickness as the rest, and then place it onto your pan. We want them about two inches apart from each other, and if you place them like this, and then two more here and one more here, you can actually get more on the sheet pan. So we're gonna go ahead and cover this um, after I have it all filled um, with the tea towel and we're gonna place it in the refrigerator overnight.
All right, so this is day two, and we're going to boil our bagels. So the first thing we wanna do is prep our sheet pan. I have it lined now with parchment paper. I feel like it bakes better on there than on the silicone mat. So I just want to make sure that this is done before our bagels come out of the water so we don't have to go back and forth. And I'm just gonna sprinkle that semolina again on the bottom of the sheet pan. We're gonna come back over to our bagels that have been sitting in the refrigerator overnight. And you need to know when these are done. I actually let these come to room temperature for about 20 minutes or so. They're nice and light and fluffy. They do have a little skin on them um, and they are cold, which is easier to work with. But you know when the bagels are ready, we're just gonna do one sample here and then I'll get to the rest. Um, we're gonna place them into rapidly boiling water and if it floats right away, which that does, it's really uh, ready to go. So what we wanna do is submerge this for about 20 seconds literally count to 20 and then we're going to remove this and place it onto a cooling rack to let the water excess water drain you can see i've done a couple here and some water drips um, came off and then if you'd like it um, plain then you just place it right onto the pan or if you're interested in placing it into the um, seeds this is actually the everything but the bagel sesame seed mixture from Trader Joe's, but you can make your own by putting granulated garlic or dried onion and different seeds. There's fennel and poppy seed and sesame seed in here. It's really tasty. Um, you want the fluffy side up. So the one that was um, not the cornmeal side, you place it upside down, move it around a little bit, very gently lift it up. You don't want to deflate the bagel at all and then place it right onto your cornmeal sheet pan. So we're gonna do one more round, doing three or four at a time, whatever you feel comfortable with. I have this large spider here. This works really well. If you don't happen to have one of these, you can just use a slotted spoon. So you might wanna do one or um, two at a time. So we'll just do three right now. Oops, I wanna make sure that that is the correct side up. Make sure you press it down so that it gets fully submerged. We're just giving it a bath in this hot water and uh, we don't want to overcook it because what this does is it tightens the skin around the outside. It also kills the yeast on the edges, so it won't puff as much in the oven, um, and that will keep that nice, dense chewiness in the bagel. So once it's been in there for about 20 seconds, we're gonna remove these. The cool thing about this one is I can do it all at one time because it's a really big, what we call a spider. We're gonna place them gently onto our rack here. And then take our seed mixture, mix it up again, place it right inside. You can do probably two at a time with this one. If you get a larger pan, you can do more. And we're still gonna leave room because it, believe it or not, it will keep expanding. As it goes into the oven and bakes, it's called oven spring. And the yeast that's still alive inside is going to rise. And uh, we'll see what it looks like. It goes in the oven after this point for about 20 minutes we turn the oven on to 450 but then as soon as we put the bagels in we reduce it down to 400 and we'll check it out in about 20 minutes here's the final product super delicious chewy new york style bagels